Conics on the calculator. The four types of conic sections are parabolas, ellipses, circles, and hyperbolas. They are called conic sections because they are created by this section of a plane slicing through cones. This presentation will cover circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. A circle is created by making a horizontal slice of a cone. An ellipse is created by making an oblique slice of a cone. And a hyperbola is created by making a vertical slice of a mirrored cone pair. The standard or most familiar form of the equation of a circle is quantity x minus h squared plus quantity y minus k squared equals r squared. H determines the displacement of the circle to the left and right. K determines the displacement up and down, and R is the radius. If we knew the radius, we could use algebra to solve for Y and graph the equation. Now, this is for a simplified version where we don't have H and K equals 0. And in this case, the radius is 6, so X squared plus Y squared equals 6 squared. And so that simplifies to X squared plus Y squared equals 36, and we subtract X squared from both sides. So now we have Y squared equals 36 minus X squared. So we solve for y by taking the square root of both sides, and so we have y equals the square root of 36 minus x squared. And we can graph it by putting it in the graphing calculator. And here we do that, and we graph, and we see, what do we see, a circle? No, we see sort of half an ellipse. We only get the top half of the circle because the square root of y is plus or minus. And if you take the, the square root of 16, for example, it has two roots, square roots. It has 4 and negative 4. And so if we go to y equals and put in y2 the negative of that top one and graph it, we get an enclosed um, conic, and but it's not circular. And the reason it's not is because of the proportional distortion in the regular view screen window. And we can adjust that by going hitting zoom and then 5 for square. And so what if there was an easier way to do this without using the algebra and without having to have the center of the circle of the origin? Well, fortunately, Text Instruments has created an application that comes standard with TI-84 Plus and TI-84 Plus Silver Edition calculators. The application is called Conix, and the application can also be loaded onto a TI-83 Plus calculator. And we access the application by hitting the Apps key, and then we scroll down to Conix, and we press um, Enter, and we see that we have a choices here, circle, ellipse, hyperbola, and parabola. So if we press enter for circle, we see one, the standard form of the circle equation, just as I showed you earlier. Now we can press enter to choose this entry, and we're going to enter h equals 3, k equals 3, and r equals 6. And we press graph, and this is what it looks like. We can see that k equals 3 and h equals 3 moved the center to 3 comma 3 on the coordinate plane. We can evaluate points on the circle by pressing trace. And we can move around the circle to evaluate by pressing the right arrow. And from there we can continue either way around the circle with either right or left arrow. If we want to change the window settings we can go to mode. And here's the mode key and what you see here. Note that auto is highlighted. We can go down, arrow down and to the right and change auto to manual. And when we do that, uh, we can press the Y equals key to go back to this menu, and then we can press the window key to get to conic window. And in conic window, we can change window settings to whatever we want. And note that the X min uh, to X max difference is greater than the Y min to Y max difference. That adjusts for a screen proportionality. And so what we're going to do, if we change Y min Y max to match X min X max, what are we going to get? We're going to get an elliptical shape because this will come back to the screen distortion. We can change the proportion back to normal here by pressing zoom and then enter for zoom conic. That would be zoom 1. And we see that the graphical proportionality is restored. We press the y equals key to go back to the circle parameters. In the circle equation, if the h is positive, the circle moves to the right of the origin. So in the equation, it becomes minus h to move the circle to the right of the origin. For k, the same principle applies. A positive k is subtracted and moves the circle upward. We can experiment by using different numbers, positive and negative, for h and k to see what happens. Let's see what happens with this and negative h and positive k. The negative h moves the circle to the left, and the positive k moves it up. The center of the circle is located at x equals negative 4 and y equals 5. 
Let's get back to the main menu by pressing Y equals three times. We get to this menu, and we're going to scroll down once to Ellipse and press Enter, and we see this view. We have two versions of the standard form of an ellipse. The first is the form of an A bigger than B, and the other is the other way around. If both H and K were zero, we could fairly quickly solve for Y and graph, just like we did for the circle. But fortunately, with the Conics application, it takes care of it for us. Half the major or larger axis is, is called A, and half the minor or smaller axis is B. Let's press Enter, and then put in negative 5 for H and negative 2 for K, and then make half the major axis 10 and half the minor axis 3, and we press Graph, and this is what we see. From here, we can press Trace and move around the ellipse as with the circle. Each endpoint at the left and right mark each end of the major axis. Each endpoint at the top and bottom mark each end of the minor axis. Let's go back to the main menu by pressing Y equals three times again and arrow down twice to get to hyperbola. We can choose hyperbola just by pressing enter and note we have two different types of hyperbolas where we have two separate curves oriented differently. The first one is the X term minus the Y squared term and the second one is the Y squared term minus the X squared term. And note that the right side of the equation in standard form is one. If the equation you see is a different number than 1, you'll need to divide all terms by that number to get to standard form. Let's arrow down to get to the type 2 hyperbola. And to choose it, we press Enter. Uh, note that the only difference between this and the ellipse equation is the minus sign between the two terms. Note that the A, B, H, and K settings are left over from our look at ellipses. We press Graph to look at it. And now press Trace to evaluate. And it takes us immediately to the minimum of that top curve at negative 5 comma 8. We can use left and right arrow keys to move left and right on that top curve. We can press the up arrow to take us down to the lower curve. Here we've, we've done it. We can move the arrow left and right on the lower curve. Now one, gr one great tool in the conic application is called the conic zoom feature. We've already briefly introduced it earlier. Let's set up this ellipse with the, these settings and go backward by pressing Y equals three times. So we get to ellipse, and we press enter, and arrow down once. So we're going to the second uh, version of ellipse. We press graph, and this is what we see. To get conic zoom, we have to go back by pressing y equals until we get this view. When we have this view, we can press the mode key, and the mode key we go over and change to manual setting. Then from here, we go back by pressing the escape under that ESC on the left on the view screen, and that's the Y equals key, and we get this view, and then we can uh, press the zoom key to get the conic zoom menu. From here you can try different zoom conic zoom features. One good one to use here is Z box or zoom box to carefully evaluate the circle, ellipse, or hyperbola. The first good thing is that it starts you at the center of the conic you're evaluating. So you press zoom box, it takes you right to that center, which can help you understand what kind of conic you have. From here you can scroll anywhere using the four arrows. Here the cursor is just above and to the left of, the x in, of an x-intercept. We can form the left edge of the box by pressing enter, then using the down arrow. And when we establish the left edge we want, we do not press enter, but arrow to the right. When you see that the you have the box the way you want it, then you press Enter, and, and this is what you get. From here, you can continue to move the free cursor by moving the arrows. And to get really close to where we want to be, in this case, the x-intercept on the left. In this lesson, we went over how to access the Conics application that comes standard on TI-84 Plus and TI-84 Plus Silver Edition graphing calculators. If you lose the application from your calculator or want to put it in your TI-83 Plus calculator, you can download it from www.education.ti.com and go to Downloads there. Conics are not the easiest part of algebra, and using the Conics application can help you to evaluate circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. This application is especially helpful in evaluating shifts from the origin and considering H and K values. Always remember that positive H subtracted from X moves the conic to the right, and the positive K subtracted from Y moves it up, and vice versa if, if those values are negative. In the time allowed, we just made a beginning of how to use conics. Use it and learn by playing around with it. 
Hope this video has been helpful and instructive. Thanks.